the dark and the light, the fallen and the saved. The Port Clares are just one of the orders that have made Galway their home. The community has been here since 1642, so long in fact that they've given their name to the area. The Port Clares are an enclosed order, so they very rarely leave Nuns Island. They join in prayer seven times a day, rising at midnight for what they call their most important work of the day, prayer. Even when an ambulance siren is heard, they pray for the community on the other side of the convent wall. I've come for early morning mass, which is open to the public, but even here, the poor clares remain in their own area behind the altar. <laughs> Principal, Sister Colette, has agreed to take time out from her day to meet me for a chat. I'm kind of intrigued by the grate. Is that just symbolic or...? or? Uh, well, yes, uh, we call it the grill, and it, it is uh, symbolic, but it's symbolic of the fact that we take an extra vow, a vow of enclosure, in addition to the other three vows that most religious take, poverty, chastity and obedience. We take a fourth one of enclosure. It's not an imposition on us anyway, and it's a reminder to us that we've um, come apart from the mainstream uh, world to live more fully for God and for the people that we carry, you know, in mm. our prayers. What part of the world did you grow up in? Salt Hill. <laughs> Salt Hill, really? Yeah. God, you didn't come very far, really, <laughs> no, did you? <laughs> and what was your own life like then before you joined the Poor Clares? Well, I uh, went to, it was UCG when I went over, it was NUIG now, and I did commerce. And then after that, I went on to do accountancy. I had never thought of being a nun, you know, I'd gone out with different guys and whatever, and always thought I'd get married. And um, just at some stage, I had a really, really deep experience of being loved by God. It happened at Mass, and um, it just was very, very deep. And it, my whole life changed a year after I qualified, I entered. Interesting, though, isn't it, that there should be two such disparate worlds, like Bohemian Galway out there with all the noise and music and everything else, and just over the wall, an entirely different world. How, how do you relate, say, to the city of Galway? When we even look out the window, you can see that you're right in the centre of where everything is happening. People write for prayers, people come to the door for prayers. And so you'd be very aware of what's going on in people's lives. The, the letters that you get or the people that you meet, it's just heartbreaking, some of it, you know. And yet somehow they feel that if they come here and leave it here, you know, that it'll be looked after. You know, and that's lovely. Sister Colette has agreed to let me inside, which is very much a one-off, but it's given me a chance to see how life unfolds in this unique and timeless part of Galway. It's a regular day in the convent, and the nuns are busy in the kitchen preparing lunch. Great. Sister Faustina. Sister Faustina, very good, very good. We're busy bees. Yes, yeah. Great. Well, I've scrubbed up now, so can I give a little hand? You can, of course. Great. Yeah, yeah, come in here. Many hands make life work, as they say. That's right. So, Bonaventure, are you from this part of the world, or where uh, I'm from Ennis, County Clare. Oh, lovely, yeah. lovely. Yes. And did you come exactly. straight from school into the community, or...? No, I came up to study in NUIG. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, Go and ahead. it was a year there, and I discovered the poor players here in Galway. And do you mind asking, what were you studying in, in uh, UCG? Uh, well, I did pre-med. So, so would you would you have been coming here for Mass and Benediction or something, or...? I, just? Was, I wasn't no. actually, no, no. No, I didn't like to think of having a vocation at all, to oh, be honest. Right. Oh, yeah, I yeah. wasn't coming anywhere near the place. Yeah, yeah. But the vocation came anyway. Sure. Before I entered, I uh, had a big struggle, really. I knew that I was being called to this way of life, but to actually enter the monastery was, was a struggle. Yeah. But once I made the decision, and once I came in, I was very, very happy, I have to say. Yeah, yeah. And in your own case, did, did you grow up nearby? Or? I'm from Ormore, actually, just out the road, really. What was your path towards the Port Well, I, um, I was a student in NUIG, and um, I was studying arts. I suppose it happens to everybody at a particular at some stage in their life, but for me it just happened very early on in my life. I think I was 19 or 20. So. Oh, really? I remember when I was a little girl going by, you know, when you look in, there's kind of a mystery about it. And mm -hmm. I remember, you know, going by in the car with my mother and asking her what was in there, and she'd say, oh, they're the nuns who don't go out, and they're the nuns who get up at night to pray. And I remember being so impressed by that, even as a small child, and 
kind of wondering. So it was the first thing that came into my mind. I can't explain it. Like you know, it's it is it's the Holy Spirit just kind of yeah. um, inspires people in different ways. It seems that far from being uniform, everyone I met had taken their own very personal route to Nuns Island. Sister Anthony, there you are. You were hiding on me. I'm like manager. Yeah, so you're taking this on? I am, yes. Is sunbathing allowed it is? Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah. So tell me, what part of the world uh, did your life begin? I'm from Clonmel in Tipperary. Oh, very And good. I was working in Galway for a few years, that's why I heard about this place. And what were you doing before you joined the convent? I was working in the county council, the accounts department. So tell me about your own vocation and how, how you came to uh, decide that this was the life for you. Well, I just, I think, gradually, I mean, I did everything now that people my age would do, and I had plenty of friends and boyfriends, but um, I suppose from the time I was about 14, this was in the back of my mind, and I found out I'd, I had to do something about it, so... So, so what year were you professed? In uh, 1963. 1963. And what do you remember of that day? I don't remember that. If you want to tell me about the, the day I entered, I came in, and I sat up in bed that night, and I shook from head to foot from 8 o'clock until midnight, and I said... Just what have you done to it yourself? And then I heard the bell for the office at 12 o'clock and I fell asleep and I don't remember anymore. Go ahead. But that was like I got it all over me in one night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and how was the convent at that time in comparison to now, say? It was very different and the floors were, you know, there would be bare boards and we had coconut matting everywhere because we didn't wear sandals then, we just had bare feet. So it was... Um, was it, it was tougher than... It was than harder too. physically, yes. How do you ever really know that this was the You path? don't, you grow into it. You come in, I mean, my mother wouldn't give away my clothes when I came in because she expected me back. And so you're saying that there's, there's, a, there's a draw towards it and then in time it becomes... Well, there are lots of things. Say, if 70% of you want something, you can say that's your vocation in life. Sure. When you can have a lot of trouble from the 30%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, all that has to come up and be dealt with and all these questions and doubts. No matter what life you're in. Far from being locked in a time warp, the Galway Poor Clares have recently embraced the internet. When their website went online, it had over one million hits in the first week alone. Even amongst themselves, you know, there's a gentleness towards one another, there's an affection for one another, there's plenty of mirth and happiness around the place, and, uh, and, uh, and none of them seem to have lost their personalities. They're all proud of where they come from, and even though they've left those lives behind, they've left their names, their families, their places behind, they haven't left their personalities behind. So I suppose, really, contemplation isn't about erasing your personality, it's actually about letting it shine. And t today was just beaming full of happy people. I just loved it.